So they've removed the key bridge in Baltimore, Maryland with an explosion. Now, million dollar question, where was the crew when this whole thing happened? Let's talk about it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the Baltimore Key Bridge and the steps to clean up the mess and also repair the actual structure. Now, this is costing that particular part of the world, I would say millions, if not billions of dollars. That port is very important. A lot of big things, expensive things come, th I'm talking about cars, all kind of things that we use every day, that we see every day come through that port or they may leave that port to go to other countries. That is a very important port. And also, of course, the bridge right there and people drive on is not going to be back up and running for years. They're talking about 2028 until that bridge can get back up and running. So they're trying to make steps right now to clear the way, repair the actual port, and get back to business. Now, part of this is blowing the bridge up to free the ship, to free that passage. Now, <laughs> the, the crew were still on board this whole time. Oh, yeah. It's been weeks now. They've not been able to leave. Now, there's a couple of reasons why. The first reason is because there's an investigation. They'll talk about that in the clip we're going to see in a minute. There's an investigation, but also these are not U.S. citizens so can you just exit the boat and do whatever you want to do, go wherever you want to go? I'm not quite sure. If you're coming across the border illegally on foot, then I guess you could do that. But on the boat and you're from over there somewhere, they're going to say, hey, stay right on the boat. And you could live on the boat for quite a while because I understand these vessels are meant to be lived on because you're talking about they're circumnavigating the globe. They're going a very long distance in open water with no humans around except for them, they're going to have the ability to live on the boat. But I think at a certain point they want to get off, but they can't get off because there's too much going on and their status is not that of an American citizen. Now, before I go any further, let's get to the news clip here. This is going to be on, what's this, MS-13 DNC, MSNBC. We're going to see what they did to the actual bridge a little bit more than what I showed from the beginning, and we're going to hear some details. Okay, how long is it going to take? How long is it? How much is it going to cost? What are the details of the upcoming situation? And without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Take a look at what's happening in Baltimore right before we came on the air with crews blowing up part of that bridge that collapsed when a cargo ship hit it a couple months back. Look at this. That's crazy. That's totally crazy. Look, look at the damage right there to the actual ship. Now, the crew, again, is still on the ship. They're still there. And look at how badly it's damaged. I'm surprised they, that, I'm surprised that they can be on this ship considering how badly it's damaged. But maybe the under, the under and, I, and I know I'm not getting the, the, the phrases correct, but the part of the ship that's underneath the surface of the water, I guess that's still intact. So you still have some buoyancy, but the damage is pretty extensive. That was the moment the crews set off explosives to break apart that 600 ton steel beam that was still on top of the Dolly cargo ship. Now remember, that ship's been stuck there ever since this. You know that moment when the ship hit the Francis Scott Key Bridge back in late March overnight. So listen, that was March 26th of this year, 2024. We're now into May. So you're talking about two months that they've been just in the water. Dude, this is bad. <laughs> like there is no bridge. Like there is no bridge. That is new video we're getting in body cam from the night that it happened from Maryland's Department of Natural Resources. The shock. Did you hear that in that first responder's voice? I mean, he sounded shaken up saying there is no bridge when this happened. The collapse killed the six construction workers who had been filling potholes on the bridge last night. Just last week, crews recovered the body of the final missing victim, which is why they moved forward with the demolition today. Right. So I guess that was the, the, the mission to recover all the victims. And then, OK, we can go forward with a demolition. But until we do that, then you couldn't 
Okay, that makes sense. Nobles is joining us now. He has been covering that bridge collapse. Tail end now of this removal process. The port has been closed. Timeline now for when things could get back to normal seems to be speeding up now that this really critical part has been demolished uh, out, of, out, of the, out of the situation. Yeah, that's right, Hallie. And they took quite a bit of time before they decided to take this kind of dramatic move uh, and accelerate this process by using explosives to remove uh, the remnants of that bridge off of that shipping container that's still locked in the port right now. And part of the reason they waited was because of that search for the remains of the last victim, which they were able to do. And now they believe that this is going to move all along a lot quicker. They're not looking at a timeline of anywhere between three and six months before the port is back open and and running. Uh, that, of course, a huge, huge step in this process because so much cargo comes in and out of that port. But it's look at that. Look at the road. You see the bridge right there. And then the road from the bridge is laying across the vessel. That is a crazy sight to see. Still a very uh, small step in the overall recovery uh, of this area and a and that tells you how big the ship is because, look, let's go back a little bit. This is four lanes. It's four lanes. It looks like it's two lanes when you kind of zoom in out. Like it might be the center line right there, a lane right there, a lane right there. This is actually one, two, three, four lanes across just a, just one portion of this ship. That, that, gives you this, that gives you an idea of the scale and how traumatic, how massive that impact was. And that's why the... Because it looked like, well, the, the the bridge just fell. There was nothing supporting it. Nah, people don't understand how big these ships are. Well, a very uh, small step in the overall recovery uh, of this area and a, a new bridge being put in place. The timeline on that is looking more like the end of 2028 before uh, a new bridge is in place. And this is still going to cost. So you're talking about probably at least four to five years. And you know the way that some of these public works operate. <laughs> you, you see a bridge or a road being constructed for your entire life. And it's never done. And as a matter of fact, as the time progresses, the condition of the project gets worse and worse. When it first started, it was better than 10 years later. Uh, millions and millions of dollars. In fact, there are, are some estimates uh, that it could be 1.5 to 1.9 billion dollars to have the the bill bridge completely rebuilt, and that's going to take a lot of time. Look at this. So they're talking about 1.5 to 1.9 billion to rebuild the bridge in just over four years. 100 million to 200 million of cargo passes through the port of Baltimore every day. Two million in wages at stake every day. So this is really, really big. That is a tremendous economic impact to the entire East Coast and really the world. Uh, this, you're talking about $200 million worth of cargo that passes through the port of Baltimore every day. There's an estimate that as many as $2 million worth of wages are at stake every single day. So there is a huge sense of urgency to get this process moving. Urgency, but all, you know, it, Including for Ryan, the, the people on the Dolly ship who are still on board, the 21 members of that crew, they have not been allowed to leave since that bridge collapses because of the investigation, because they've been questioned about things. Mm -hmm. Now that the steel beam is off, what is next for them? Yeah, there, there's a lot of reasons that they're still on board that ship, Hallie. You, you mentioned perhaps the most important reason, and that's because they are a part of this active investigation. They're not mentioning the immigration part because these are not U.S. citizens. Funny how they do. You know, MS-13 DNC, you got to be careful because the stats that they have on the screen, I already fact checked that that's correct. But some of this stuff that they're doing, trying to obfuscate reasons why they're still on board, you got to watch them. By the FBI to determine what went wrong on that day and if there's any specific culpability, perhaps even criminal culpability uh, that's related to this awful disaster. But then there's also the fact that this still remains a working shipping container. The, this is a, a ship that needs crew on board in order to keep it uh, operating and keeping the vessel in place uh, during this period of time. And so uh, there are a number of, uh, uh, of these crew members on board the ship that are having a lot of anxiety about paying their bills, about being able mm. to take care of their families mm. uh, many of them not uh american citizens they're from uh, other countries okay i'm glad you mentioned that so you get some credit nbc
countries, in fact. Uh, and so they would like the opportunity to have their lives move forward. Uh, this was a big step in that process. They can't get off that ship until they're able to remove it from the harbor and get it out of that port. This is the next step towards that process. So they're going to be on board until they can get that ship. I'm not I don't understand that part, because didn't we see the federales board the ship from a boat? If the feds can board the ship, then I presume they the feds were able to get off after they board it. So if you can get on and get off, why can't the crew members get on and get off? I don't understand. To me, that doesn't make any sense. Moving uh, the timeline of that now much further ahead than it was before after they took yeah. this step uh, of uh, knocking down uh, those uh, bridge rem remnants with those explosive devices. So, yeah, that's what's going on. Shout out to them over at NBC for that news update. But, yeah, they they blew the span up with the crew still on board. Now, million dollar question as I close, if they were to be injured by the explosion some kind of way, which they probably wouldn't. These are experts doing this. But if they were to be injured, who would be liable? How does that really work? Would they be able to go to a hospital? Would they be able to get off the ship then? Although they say they can't get off the ship. There's a lot more questions, but again, you saw it right there. Four years for the bridge to be rebuilt, three to six months for the port to be back open. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on what's happening here with the, the ship and how long it's going to take? Will it be four years? Is it going to be forever like some other public works? You'll see a road being worked on. Okay, it'd be a simple pothole in the in the road for 15 years and never gets fixed totally but what, whatever your thoughts on that are let me know in the comments below you guys know where i'm at i think it'll take longer and more money to fix this and i don't know what they're really going to do to avoid this in the future because i don't think any bridge would have survived that kind of impact from a vessel so large Maybe they got to make a, a a wider span. I don't know what the solution is, but obviously they got to do something because this can't be happening again. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that is all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.